Hey everybody, welcome back to Amy Reads. Today I am giving you my November reading wrap up. Um, I actually read quite a few books in November. Uh, I feel like I was really powering through. Um, I had my November TBR, which I think I did really good with, and then um, I went to Y'all Fest in the middle of November and got some ARCs. So I even worked in some ARCs for January that I really wanted to review for you guys. So um, without further ado, let's get started. Now regarding the ARCs that I got at Y'all Fest, I've decided that um, I'm going to just do a separate review for those later this week. So I read um, Emma Mills, Famous in a Small Town, which comes out in January. Um, I read The Music of What Happens by Bill Konigsberg, also coming out in January. I think this one's the latest, January 29th maybe. Uh, and then I also read The Birds, the Bees, and You and Me by Olivia Heinbaugh. This is a debut novel. Um, so I'm going to set these two and the Emma Mills um, aside, and I will do a mashup review of these later in the week. So if you're interested in my thoughts on these arcs uh, that come out in a couple months, then stay tuned for that. So as far as the other books that I read this month, um, I'm just going to kind of go in chronological order of when I read them as opposed to going in order of what I liked the least to what I liked the best. I don't know, I just kind of feel like doing that this month. So I meant to tell you all about the very last book that I read in October, but I finished it on Halloween and then I forgot to include it in my October wrap up, but that is Behind Her Eyes by Sarah Pinborough. This is a psychological thriller. I ended up giving this five stars. Everyone talks about the ending of this book and that you're kind of either going to love it or hate it. I am in the camp that I love it. So um, just to tell you a little bit about this book, it is told in uh, two points of view. We have Adele, who is a very rich housewife married to David, and then we have Louise, who is a divorced single mother who is uh, working for David. David is her new boss. Before she finds out David is her new boss, um, or really that he's married necessarily, Louise shares a kiss with David in a bar, and then it's kind of like, no, I shouldn't let this happen. Turns out he's her boss. Um, so that's awkward. And then she also strikes up a friendship with Adele. Um, and Adele is maybe a little troubled, maybe has some secrets in her past. Um, that's all I'll say. It is a ride, let me tell you. The first book that I actually completed in November was an arc that I won on a Goodreads giveaway. I was so excited about this, um, and I've actually lent it to a friend, so I don't have it with me right now. And that is Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid. If you've been watching me for any period of time, you know how much I love Taylor Jenkins Reid, and I've discovered her this year along with a lot of other booktubers. Um, and so I was lucky enough to get an arc of her new book that comes out in March. Um, this is a fictionalized story of a 1970s rock band, sort of with a bit of a Fleetwood Mac feel. You know, there's, you know, five or six members, I think. Um, there's a lot of relationships going on between the members of the band. There's a lot of strife. There's a lot of drug use. There's a lot of alcoholism. Um, a lot of stuff going on. And, but they're also making, like, the most incredible music ever. And so, kind of, the, the plot is that they have historically broken up right at the peak of their popularity, right after making this incredible album, kind of a la Rumors, uh, by Fleetwood Mac. And, of course, Fleetwood Mac didn't immediately break up. But Daisy Jones and the Six did. So, um, it is told 100% in interview format. So, it goes really quickly, but it has that signature Taylor Jenkins read style where, I mean, she just creates these characters that are so complex and yet simple and just like people you would know in real life. It's an incredible talent, honestly. Um, I gave this five stars. I think it's going to be a huge hit for her. I don't know if it will be quite as huge as The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, but I kind of think it will be. And then to change things up, I read a YA contemporary, and this was on my November TBR. I read Emmy and Oliver by Robin Benway. I gave this four stars. This is a story of uh, Emmy and Oliver, if you can imagine. They are neighbors and childhood best friends. Oliver gets kidnapped by his own father when he's like seven years old and they don't find him again until he's like 17. And so he comes home and as you can imagine, is kind of messed up about everything because he didn't really realize he'd been kidnapped. 
Um, he just thought he was going to live with his father and then, you know, turns out everyone's on the hunt for his dad because he kidnapped him and he's dealing with coming home and his mother has remarried and has other kids and um, he is reconnecting with Emmy and their friend group as well. Next, I read Everything I Never Told You by Celeste Ng. This was her first book, came out in 2014, I think. Um, this is historical fiction mystery about a um, Asian American family in the 1970s, I think in Ohio, yeah, in a small town in Ohio, and their eldest daughter, Lydia, um, turns up dead. She's been drowned in the like local pond lake area. Um, and so it's not only about figuring out what happened to Lydia, but just kind of this fractured family. And you get to go, you know, it's all third person, but you get to be in the mind of the mom and the dad and the older brother and the younger sister and really kind of get this holistic view of what is going on in this family and how they've been troubled for years um, and how all of this led to Lydia's death. It is beautifully written, beautifully told. I gave this five stars. A lot of good reads this month, actually. Next up is a recently hauled book. This was actually in my fall haul video. Um, I didn't know how I was gonna feel about this because it doesn't have like phenomenal Goodreads ratings, like a 3.4 or five. Um, and this is a thriller mystery, so, you know, that can usually mean it's gonna be maybe kind of run of the mill. I'd heard a couple things where it was like, eh, not my favorite, but it's okay. I ended up loving this book. I gave it a four and a half out of five stars, and that is The River at Night by Erica Ferencik. This is about a woman named Winnie, yeah. Um, a woman named Winnie and her three best friends who decide to go on a river rafting excursion in the way the hell out there wilderness of Maine. And they are only taken by this guide. It's just the five of them, the four friends and the guide. Shit happens. Um, they end up being kind of stranded. And that's all I'll say. Even before they get on the river, I was so on edge. Just, it's very like atmospheric and has, um, it's really unsettling. I was really into this book. Like I was to the point where I was like, okay, how many more minutes of work do I have before I can read this book? I was really invested. So I gave this a four and a half out of five stars. Um, I thought it was excellent and very fast paced and very adventurous. Next, I read Josh and Hazel's Guide to Not Dating by Christina Lauren, which is their newest one, I believe. This is about friends Josh and Hazel, who they were kind of acquaintances in college, and um, Hazel is very quirky and eccentric, and um, she feels very strongly that she shouldn't have to change for anybody. And uh, Josh is more of, not necessarily like a straight-laced kind of guy, but he's like, I don't know, just kind of more of an average Joe. He's not um, real quirky or goofy. And Hazel has always thought that he thought she was kind of a dummy um, back in college. They reconnect uh, later in life and end up just deciding that they're going to be best friends. Really, Hazel decides she's going to be best friends with him. And they end up going out on these blind dates that they set up for each other. So these like double blind dates. So... Um, of course, over the course of these blind dates, maybe they find out that they have feelings for each other. Um, this one was really good. I've only read another Christina Lauren. I've read Dating You, Hating You. Um, and I think I gave that one four stars as well. It's definitely steamy. So just like warning, you know, word to the wise. If you like that, cool. If you don't like that, just know that that is in here. And the last book that I will talk about is Between Shades of Grey by Ruta Sepetys. This was one of my TBR jar picks. Um, sorry, I just realized that there's like light from my window on my face. Anyways, I read Between Shades of Grey by Ruta Sepetys. <sighs> I gave this five stars. It was beautiful. This is about Lena and her family who live in Lithuania. Um, my husband's watching YouTube. I don't know if you can hear that. They live in Lithuania. This is in 1941. And uh, Lena's family and thousands of other Lithuanians were taken and um, placed in Siberia to work hard labor, basically, during World War II. Um, the Soviets had occupied Lithuania. Um, they, you know, these countries were really stuck in the middle of World War II um, between the Germans and the Soviets. And so 
This is not a true story, but it is a fictional story based on a very true event. I highly suggest this if you enjoy historical fiction. Real quick, I wanted to, sorry, that like light is now, I don't even know, let's see. Nope, doesn't change a thing. Okay, <laughs> so very quickly, I wanted to mention that I DNF'd one of the um, TBR jar picks for the month. And that was Another Piece of My Heart by Jane Green. I tried reading this on audiobook. I don't know how far I got, but I really just didn't like it. And I was like, you know, who cares? I'm going to donate this book. It's a library binding. Someone out there will enjoy this, but it wasn't me. So anyway, that is all that I read in the month of November. I can't believe we are almost done with the year. I read a lot of four, four and a half, five star reads this month. So I'm very excited about that and found some new favorite books. So I hope that you did too. I'm going to go because this light is creeping, creeping over my face at this point. So yeah, anyway. Okay. If you enjoyed this video, it's not like blinding me. It's just annoying. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up and hit subscribe and hit that little bell if you would like notifications of when my videos go up. Um, and I will be back soon with more book talk. Bye!